Shall we go? You ready? Um, do we have Kristen and Red? They were going to be online. Do we? Have, yeah, Anna, are they online yet? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Um, let's give them a minute or two. Oh, Lara's got to go to a dress rehearsal, so we're trying to get the student presentation moving. Oh, got it. Quickly. They're, they're practicing their flight choreography right now. Well, I mean, so. it doesn't okay. help us do this. You're okay. You're not the fight. No. Do you have a live stream coming from the theater? Yeah, we, we have a live stream. No, I mean, like right now to your computer. Can you see what they're doing? No. Oh. <laughs> that would be amazing. But there's an option to live stream the show if you can't go in person. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So what show is it? Twelfth Night oh, awesome. by Shakespeare, yeah. but it's set in the 1980s on a college campus. In case you couldn't tell from the earrings. <laughs> Hi, guys. How's it going? Good. Well, let's get started because it's 632. Um, uh, it's called the order 632 uh, meeting of the Montfield Roxbury Board of School Directors. Um, for sort of business public comment. Um, and I don't have the screen of people who might be watching in Libby or Anna, so if you could, uh, maybe I could. So I can you, tell you if somebody's got their hand raised. Right now, you're good. Good, okay, and no one in the room either. Um, so that's we're, we're gonna do the consent agenda after the student presentation, just mix that up a little because uh, Alara has to is has scooted out of dress Double rehearsals and duty. is due back at some point soon. So um, let's do Sorry, that. Jim, we do have one hand raised for public comment. Oh, okay. Um, Why well, you just let that person go? If you could introduce yourself, that would be great. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Amanda Garcet. Um, parent of two children. I am here just to, um, I read the report, the superintendent's report and um, read about the literacy bill. I just wanna encourage this school board to really stand and ensure that there will be, that we will not as a district be against this bill. Maybe there are concerns about the 40 hours that is totally understandable, but there's a lot of great components in that bill that will impact all of our students in the state and in our school. As you know, there's a lot of concerned par parents around the literacy and uh, dyslexia in our district. Um, there's a lot of things happening that um, we are concerned about in terms of how we are assessing our kids' needs and our, our assessing our, the literacy that they're receiving and we have been really happy for the commitment that the district took for the two year training that the elementary school teachers are taking. And we still see a lot of inequities. There's a lot of parents that are paying out of pocket for tutoring outside of the district. There's a lot of parents that ca cannot afford that. And it still is a huge, huge component of um, uh, inequities in this, in this district. Uh, so I really hope that if you are going to testify against that bill, that there is a lot more information that you listen to the VPR um, news uh, cast that came out with represent uh, Senator Gulick talking about the bill plus other literacy educators in the state. And there's a lot of information out there, and I really encourage all of you to be informed and really be on the right side of history for this. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Is that it, or do anyone else? That's it. Great, thank you. Um, Alara and Miriam, take it away. Okay, hi. Um, we just have a little student presentation about what's been happening in the past few weeks at MHS to keep everyone updated and like talk about some really fun, positive stuff that's happening in this school. Um, I look like this because I'm in the middle of dress rehearsal for our show, Twelfth Night, um, by William Shakespeare, set on a college campus in the 1980s. That's why I have like a lot of blush on. Um, yeah, so we can go to the next slide. Um,
That's a little, I try to make it fancy, but yeah. <laughs> It looks very official. I can just share what on my computer. Malar, or Lara, you look gorgeous, first of all. I love the makeup. <laughs> Most people don't dress up for board meetings. I can't yeah. seem to advance the screen. Like, I can't seem to advance it when I'm yeah. pulling it up. But hold, keep going. I'll, I'll keep trying. Okay, so we had a few events in the past week. Um, we had our spring choral concert. Um, March 19th, which was really fun. Um, Miriam performed. She was really great. <laughs> then we had the day after this first ever event at our school called Soul and Soup for the Soul, where our cooking class made soup for the entire school. And as a whole school, we sat in the gym and we ate soup and we had a community meal. And it was so great because you just saw everyone mingling and talking to each other. And it was one of those events where you were like, wow, this is a really great school. Like, I don't know anywhere else that does this. Um, and then on March 27th, there was a student organized walkout for um, in support of ending the occupation in Palestine, where students marched to the state house and they gave speeches. Um, in support of Palestine. Then this past Saturday, we had our annual spring fling. Um, we hosted four other schools and we had over 500 students dancing and sweating and having fun and things like that. Um, on Monday, spoken word poet Stephen Willis came to our school and he ran a few workshops with the English classes about um, how to construct like poems based on identity. Um, and he, he made us fill out this like chart about like stuff about like race and gender and ethnicity. And then we wrote five metaphors on what it meant to exist as that identity in society. And he was like five metaphors, you just wrote a poem. And that was really cool. And he shared some of his poetry from his book, which like chronicles his life story as um, a black man growing up in Chicago. Um, our science department was doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, our physics class was doing an egg drop um, in the hallway. Um, I don't think it was that messy because they're really good physics students, so <laughs> nothing happened. Um, our biology class did a fingerprinting lab, which kind of mimics like the technology they use in like forensics labs when they take fingerprints of like evidence and how to like track DNA and things like that. And then in our AP biology class, which I'm in, um, we did a lab where we used plasmids to make bacteria glow in the dark, which was pretty cool. And yeah, tomorrow we open 12th night. <laughs> um, we've been working on this show since January and we were sold out, but then we added more seats so you can buy a ticket to be in person or you can buy a link to the live stream if you can't make it in person. And it's really cool. And those are my student updates of what has happened at this school. Oh, wait, I promise. Okay, so I was in the class that made the soup. So I promised my teacher I would like talk about this. Um, we had leftover soup. And so we packaged that up and we donated 40 quarts of soup to another way. So we were able to have share our soup with our school community, but also our outside community. Yeah. And that's it. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. What time is the play? The play is at seven. And then on Saturday, there's a, there's a two o'clock matinee. And a, and a 7 p.m., right? And there's a 7 p.m. Yeah. yeah. Two shows. It's my I last wish we show. had a full house to hear all of that. <laughs> Yeah, again this week. Really <laughs> I mean, if you guys get done early, you might be able to peek your heads into the theater and see what we're working on. So, Sneaky. yeah, I'm gonna go and finish the show now. So, thank <laughs> you, Sorry, thank you, Alara. Thanks, yeah. Miriam. Thank you, Alara. Yeah. Great. So let's skip back to the consent agenda for those who are tuning in, no one's in the room. Uh, the consent agenda is essentially items that uh, are pretty routine in terms of just things you have to approve to keep business moving, like minutes from former meetings and um, co-curricular contracts. Uh, we actually are ratifying one of our uh, union contracts, uh, which is a big deal, but we usually do it by consent agenda. Um, 
uh, <clears throat> so it just it saves time and moves things along. And if anyone has a question about it, we just pull it out and discuss it. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? I'll second. A discussion? I have a question. Um, on the AFS CME contract, yep. um, what employees does that cover? That is, and let me make sure I get it right. It's it's basically everyone who's not an IA or teacher who's in a cotton who's in a union. Support staff. Support staff. So it's our admin manager. assistants, our technology, our custodians. Those are the three main groups. The registrars. Okay, and it's like, you know, I, I took a quick look at the contract. Um, is and it was pretty long, like forty something pages. Um, is there anything? that you feel like we should know that's changed since the last contract? No, we didn't. We had some language changes this time around. Um, nothing particularly significant um, other than just very typical negotiations and language changes. Okay. It was it was a long negotiations process, <laughs> but it resulted in, in few no, major okay. changes. <laughs> Yeah. I have a follow up to that. Do can you give us the highlights of what the salary? I'm I'm just guessing salary increases over the years are. Yeah. yeah. So keep in mind that this is a very small group of employees. This is uh, around fifteen to twenty employees. Like there's not many in this union, um, and so we settled on five percent each of the next three years. Okay. Thanks. And just in case anybody's wondering, 5% is what Christina had in our budget for next year for FY25. That is what she budgeted for FY25. So it's right in line with our budget. We don't have to change anything. That's good. Great. Brett has his hand up. Brett? Yeah, the um, MRE SSA contract, the working day starts at 7.30 and ends at, I believe, 3. Is there a time frame for this group of folks there's not a there are for custodians there's specific shift times for um custodians um these jobs do have very specific job descriptions mm -hmm. in them um, most of them work from eight to four some work from seven to three some work from seven thirty to three thirty you know like they're it depends on the job um but the the custodians are the only ones in the contract that have very specific hours because they're shifts. Is there a, um let's just hypothetically, if the district were to sort of totally hypothetically were to um ha add a position that helped with transportation, would this be the union? group that it might fall into, or would it have to be outside of the three unions that we work with right now? I wouldn't know. We'd have to design the job description. Yeah. Um, I doubt it would not fit under this unit, probably. Okay, thanks. Kristen has her hand up. Kristen? It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. Hi, thanks. <clears throat> Can you all hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I just had a question about the superintendent's report, Libby, in particular, um, the uh, legislation that sounds like it's moving um, through, uh, I think it was Senate to House in terms of the literacy education modules. And I was just curious, like, around, I guess, just details like the why, the what, I'm curious if kind of the modules that they're recommend recommending, are these congruent with our current approach? Um, to literacy at MRPS and- I don't know, nobody's seen them. Nobody's seen them, okay. Um, and have, has this been based on testimony from particular groups or individuals and just wondering in their process of kind of reviewing um, what they're considering, are they gonna be seeking feedback from literacy specialists within the state or, or a superintendent's group or principal's mm -hmm. group? Lots of people have been testifying to the house around this. I'm not sure where the 40 hours came from. I, I really have no idea because it's not based on any kind of research whatsoever. So I don't know where that num number came from and I didn't follow how they came up with that number. Um, that's just what's in the bill. 
So, uh, but now the house ed will hear lots of testimony from lots of different people too, including the superintendents association and teachers and the NEA and the principals association and the Stern center. And, you know, that's, that's just how these bills work. So they'll hear plenty of, plenty of testimony around this. And so we don't know the nature of the modules or kind of the philosophy and whether or not it's sort of, you know, syncs with what we're already doing or if it's, it's a departure from what we're doing. We don't really have any content. I don't have, I don't know what they're what are in them. If if people don't know, they haven't been shared with the field. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So Kristen, there's a um there's a really good piece on Vermont edition that I don't know if it answers all of your questions and I didn't listen to the whole thing. So um so there's certainly a lot of information about what's being discussed out there. Um and yeah, I'm um, um certainly a fan of VPR or Vermont public. So um, you could, you could watch, I'd uh, listen to that um, podcast. Okay. Thank you. Is it a podcast or is it just a. Now it's a, it's a, it was yesterday maybe aired. So now you can listen to it on podcast, but yeah, yeah okay. it was aired live. I think during the, the Tuesday okay. afternoon show. Great. Any further discussion about the consent agenda? Okay. Just be a new guy question, but what are co-curricular contracts? I didn't see a link to them or they're even. like they're coaches. coaches. Coaches or advisors for clubs or something like that. They were one of the attachments. They're one, okay. Yeah, they're not they're not in the um public board packet because they're confidential until we um, approve them or whatever in the consent agenda. So yeah. you wouldn't find them online in the board packet, but they are attached to the email that board members get. And I think they're even confidential actually afterwards. Maybe even yeah. afterward, because it's a person and yeah, what they're no, getting that's... paid and they're not they're not yeah, really an employee sense. of the district. Yeah, new guy question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah and they're Good to ask. very small sums of money. <laughs> yeah. 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 For a lot of work. <laughs> the amount of hours they work. For yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. They rival, yeah. you might say, the stipend of a school board member. <laughs> uh, I have one other question, Libby. You referenced the blog that the administrators are putting out. How would people sign up for that if they wanted to get alerts for that blog? You wouldn't, you wouldn't get alerts for that. That's a that's an internal document that's sent out. And so oh. we're, putting a, we're putting a PDF in the board packet. Was there one in this? Are you going to start doing that? I didn't see one. I didn't see oh, one. It should, it should have gone in the board packet. Oh, we should. That was supposed okay. to go in the board packet. I apologize. Okay. We'll make sure that Anna gets the. We got one went out today, so we'll make sure that it went. That the board superintendent report probably didn't make much sense without it. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I remembered that you had um, other kinds of communications of that nature and i thought i was signed up for them at one point and that's why i was a little confused so now this makes a little more sense no the board yes. <laughs> i'm sorry about that the pdf no. should have gone into the board packet i did see it today i read through most of it today i don't know when exactly it appeared oh. but it is available now at the, okay. The PDF. <laughs> okay good thank you were yeah, those so things that anna attached did a follow-up could be with other, yeah okay but they'll they'll now go in the board packet just as a right. but they'll be a PDF. They won't be because they have live links, but the links are for teachers to fill things out and things like that. So like that's not appropriate. What I wanted to show, I think it's good communication and good information from our central office administrators. And it's just yeah. good, I think, for the public and for the board to see the information that's going out and the messaging that's going out. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Thanks. I'll look again. Um, any more discussion on the consent agenda? I'm, I'm glad we did Alara's presentation first. Was, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. Um, so now we're going to do committee assignments, I believe. Um, so what we thought we'd do with these is have the current chairs to the extent that they're, they're with us. I think I think everyone except Emma and Scott or I can do a little, just do an overview of the committee. Um, and then, you know, these are open for complete 
reassignment. If you want a different committee, you can have a different committee. If you know, I think the only person who's who's not on a committee is is Tim. But um, you know, definitely shift around if if you're um, if if you are looking for a new challenge um, or uh, looking to to get into a, a different committee. Definitely let us know. I mean, I do want to say that. You know, this is probably true. Like a lot of these committees have a lot of ongoing work. Um, so it would be nice to have some continuity on the committee. So it's not a complete reset. Uh, but um, yeah, but but committee seats are completely open for uh, reshuffle. Um, a important committee is going to be negotiations because we have two Two contracts, um, and in not the most flush of financial times. So, um, those those could take some time to be on the committee, but they're also super super important. Um, and I think having keeping four people on the negotiations committee is good because then we can split two and two. Um, um, but yeah, that is one of the most important committees and also one of the most time consuming committees and sometimes not the most fun. <laughs> uh, so I don't know who wants to start. Um, who's the current chair of the finance committee? Is it Brett? You wanna give an overview? Finance committee uh, is, uh, probably one of the less demanding committees. It's There's a quarterly report. We review the quarterly report, um, summarize that committee meeting um, on a quarterly basis uh, for the school board. Uh, you know, we there's a little bit more of a dive into the budget and how things are going. Um, opportunity for questions and learning if you're new to the board, it's a great opportunity for kind of getting an understanding of kind of how things, how things work and the way the, the budget functions. Um, that's the story with the finance committee. Any unless, questions? Unless somebody else, is that accurate? Is that unless anyone else, that's pretty much it. Any questions about the finance committee? Brett? Uh, unless you want to do it, Scott, I can do policy. It's all you. Okay. Uh, so the policy committee, not surprisingly, uh, helps with our policies. Uh, essentially, we we make sure our, our policies are current. Um, there are po policies are always changing based on uh, law and kind of recommended practice. The VSBA. Uh, usually does a good job of letting us know when policies need to be changed. And then oftentimes we'll give us a model policy to work from. And, and um, uh, we, you know, oftentimes, oftentimes change it, you know, just to make sure it reflects what works for our district in terms of, of values and goals. Uh, sometimes we have to, you know, either work with Pietro, the district's lawyer, or at least be cognizant of legal changes because we are not at liberty with some policies to do whatever we want because because sometimes they're mandated by law and um, they they essentially have to ensure that we are complying with the law um, and they range from uh, you know for one they're they're what guides our decision making because we are a you know a kind of policy focused board. Um, but they range from everything to, uh, you know, from our policies about alcohol and substance use in buildings to firearms to, uh, you know, how we conduct ourselves as a board. Uh, so they're pretty extensive. It's I would say it's a medium to high workload committee. Uh, we've got, you know, kind of several policies right now that we're noodling on. We've got a few that I think we need to, to get moving. Um, it's not a bad thing to have a bit of a legal background because sometimes I can help you 
know when you're you know what 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 the guardrails are and what you can do when they and use what, that little s squiggly thing yeah exactly <laughs> uh so that's that's a policy committee anything anything to add scott i think you nailed it yeah uh questions about the policy committee equity Kristen, you're the chair, right? I believe that's Mia. Mia, okay. <laughs> your facilities, yeah. right? She's facilities. facilities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but we we have we're working on yeah. um, uh, interdependent leadership yeah. on the equity committee. So we all we all work together as a as a team. Um, I'm going to read from our draft charge to give us the the. Um, uh, basis of what the equity committee is about. We function to actualize commitments of the board in our uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion policy. That's policy F22. Namely, uh, take concrete action to provide a barrier-free, safe, and supportive learning environment for all our students. The equity committee supports the board to identify and dismantle systemic obstacles that place limits on academic achievement and access to opportunities by MRPS learners based on race, ethnicity, gender, identity, sexual orientation, religious affiliation, mental and physical ability, financial resources, and family structure. Um, so that is what we've drafted as far as a charge goes. And to be perfectly honest, I think the equity committee as we have gotten underway has tried in different ways to figure out how to actualize that and, um, I think there are things that we've done that are very helpful. And I think we're still sort of finding our way about what it means to um, lead the board or support the board in meeting the goals of policy of our DEI policy. Um, just a, a couple of examples of what we've done. We created an equity tool that mostly the policy committee uses um, to kind of run the decisions around policy through uh, an equity lens. We also, for the last three years, I think, have um, uh, conducted the climate survey of how uh, what it's like to be working in our schools. Um, and we supported the, well, we worked on, the, on behalf of the board to find and hire the consultant who is um, doing the equity audit. Um, so those are a few things that we've done to, like I said, try and find our way um, through that in um, executing on this charge. One new idea that we have um, that um, is certainly related to this and in, in how um, accessibility and communication relate to equity is that um, we've been talking for a while about having a committee of, of the board that works on communication. Um, and as you can see from the list in the board packet, we already have many committees. So one idea of the equity committee is that we could take on some of the initial work to figure out what communication and engagement with our communities look like, and um, then set in place some structures that all committees could follow or the board follows, because we don't really have much in place right now. So that's an idea. If you're interested in that, the equity committee might be the place for you. Oh, and one other thing, we will be getting the report from about the equity audit quite likely um, at the next board meeting. Uh, they're still putting the finishing touches on it as well as the presentation. And um, after that, I'm sure there will be other things that the equity committee will want to um, be focused on. It'll just be a matter of um, how to best use our time. I love Question. the idea of the communications. Thank you for thinking of that. Sure. Yeah, I think I was going to bring up whether we should form a communications committee. <laughs> um, is that report? Hmm? That report you're talking about? We don't have it yet. Okay. We have the draft. But yeah. There's it's, it's, finagling going on with yeah. cleaning it up and stuff. It like, will, what's the idea behind? Like, what's the what's the headline of it? We. What, what, I mean, not not result, but what's the we hired the firm to do an audit of the whole district in terms of how are we doing essentially at providing um, an equitable education to all of our students. Mm -hmm. And um, so the report will highlight how we are doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
So the next one is, the next one is you, Kristen, facilities and energy. Thanks, Jim. So facilities and energy committee is uh, about three years young um, and kind of, it started at a time when there was this sort of this confluence of various different facilities, um, you know, issues coming up or deliberations coming up um, in combination with, we were hearing a lot from the community um, in Montpelier in particular about the um, Burgles, uh, the city was, um, you know, established and been aiming for and a desire to see some uh, kind of match and congruency uh, supporting those goals. So, um, yeah, so about three years ago, I think when I initially or the Facilities and Energy Committee was was born, and since then, and really, kind of our initial um, our initial effort was to really get into our buildings as a committee and to understand them. MHS track or the UES cafeteria or uh, you know the town hall at RBS, you know that we had a good sense of what our facilities um, are are made of. Um, so it's really kind of having a familiarity with our facilities and our, our building inventory such that, um, you know, when they're coming up as, you know, issues of conversation, um, that we can kind of understand them and represent them um, and speak to them, uh, you know, to the board to give you all a better sense of, um, of, of what that looks like. Um, and I would say in the last couple of years, the big push has been around um, net zero, and this committee came up with a resolution that the board signed off on um, in establishing a, a net zero goal to match that of, um, of the city of Montpelier, and um, we started to make the steps of creating an ad hoc committee that would help to advise the board and, um, and kind of prioritizing and figuring out how do we actually zero uh, a lot of that hold because we've been on this kind of micro focus with um budget things over the last six months um but that was has been a big um focus of our attention we we work really closely with andrew la rosa our um, facilities director for the district um and he is just consistently giving us updates on uh kind of projects and needs and things coming up andrew um produces a really sensitive and um, annual facilities report. So we're kind of the first group that uh, received that and then feedback on that. Uh, yeah. Hey, Kristen. Cutting in and out a little. I, I don't, don't know, know if it's... it's your mic or something because it doesn't seem like it's your connection. You just, your volume keeps going and then back to normal. Interesting. It's always something. Um, oh, well, I don't know what to say about that. Okay. Because I'm my computer so i guess i'll keep trying maybe give me like a thumbs up or thumbs down if it's right now you're good okay um so yeah so we work really closely with andrew la rosa our facilities director and in, in kind of reviewing that report and getting a better understanding of it and getting into the details um we tend to meet monthly and that's uh about it anybody else out in the crowd oh and then of course we also have the um facility strategic planning process that is underway that was initiated in December and we are waiting to hear a kind of draft um, report from the you know from the vendor that's been conducting that for the district so turns out we actually have a lot going on <laughs> um, so if you're if that's appealing and you're interested uh, that's what we're up to awesome thank you Kristen yeah no and uh... Yeah, now, as you mentioned, with that study coming out and uh, yeah, facilities is interesting and the net zero stuff is going to be really interesting too. So um, that is an exciting committee to be on. Um, superintendent evaluation, do you want to sure. talk about it, Mia? Sure. We um, conduct the annual evaluation of the superintendent including the midpoint evaluation. And um, we basically hold the process and then get it in front of the board um, and work with Libby on it and work with, uh, to get input from um, members of Libby's team. We get input from members of the, um, from the board 
And we also try and bring in some of the top level um, takeaways from the climate survey to put it all together. And that happens once a year. Um, and outside of that time, we don't, the, the superintendent committee doesn't really meet too much um, unless there are things we want to do to update the process that we go through. Um, and then I will say, um, putting my equity committee chair hat on for one second, the equity committee was hoping to hand off the climate survey to the uh, evaluation committee, given that it's a little bit more in their, um, the container of evaluation overall. Um, and because if the equity committee is going to be taking on the work of communication, trying to get communication um, and engagement a little bit more structured and going, then um, that will be a lot of our focus. And we don't and we don't think we would have the time for the climate survey. And we do need to conduct the climate survey, not only because it's really good information for us to have and for the community to have about what is it like to um, be working within our schools, but also because it is a contractual obligation that we have with our teachers. So that is quite likely going to be some of the work of the eval, the superintendent evaluation yeah. committee as well, which we might rebrand as just the evaluation committee because RET has for a couple of years now had the idea that we should also be doing a board assessment, like looking at our own how we work together and giving ourselves our own evaluation. So we may just become an evaluation committee. We'll see. You can be a part of that if you wanna be on the committee. I also wanna add that with a lot of work from Mia, we restructured the tool that we use to evaluate the superintendent. It's, and that was a lot of work. Hats off to Mia um, and it's a much, better and more effective tool. So um, I just want to throw that out there. Thanks, Rhett. Which means we also don't have to do that again this year. No. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's one of, I mean, evaluating the superintendent, I know we might turn into evaluation committee, but evaluating the superintendent is probably one of the, you know, like really kind of our three main tasks are passing a budget. Top three, yeah evaluating the superintendent and um policy and both pol policy and also lays on the community um and there was a period of in time when we did not have a superintendent evaluation committee and i i want to stress the importance of having a superintendent evaluation committee it's it's um it's not the most work intensive committee but i think it's one of the uh most important ones um is hiring and keeping a good superintendent is really probably the most effective thing a board can do for the district. <laughs> um, so the future of Roxbury Village School Committee has been is starting to get up and um, going. Um, I don't know, Kristen or Lynn, if you want to talk about that. And also, do we have people that we need to nominate and appoint to that committee um, as part of this, because I know that that's, that's open and we've gotten some expressions of interest, so. Well, we met Monday night for the first time. I think it was Monday sometime this week. <laughs> it's all kind of blending together. <laughs> anyway, um, and um, we selected people from each town, teachers and parents and students to be on the committee. Awesome. Um, and we have given ourselves the charge, I think, of uh, focusing on uh, initially the transition of kids to the schools here and um, or the elementary school here. And then once that's kind of figured out and things are in place, we'll move on to how do we want to support the community in using that building, because that gives us the rest of the year to do that. Um, and I think we'll be, we're, did, um, do you know, Kristen, did you get the, all the results of the survey figured out? We're going to meet weekly, I think, for the next month because there's so much to do. And then we'll move every other week or something. So we were figuring out when everybody could meet. I don't know when the meeting is. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, I think I, I've heard from most folks, uh, but not everybody yet, but we're trying to land our standing committee uh, meeting day, day and time. But in the meeting on Monday, yeah, there was there was kind of universal feeling that this is going to require some real front loading and that we would meet weekly over the kind of in the in the first month. And then from there, <clears throat> try to attempt to a more biweekly meeting schedule. Um, so, yeah, but that is to be determined, hopefully in the next, uh, I don't know, 12 hours <laughs> in terms <laughs> of um, but it is, you know, it is great that we've been able to, we've gotten interest and we've been able to respond to that interest and we've been able to let folks know that they are officially invited to join us on this committee and the intent to get the work going in earnest um, quickly. Yeah. No, excellent. And thank you everyone for um, stepping up and, and being on that committee uh, and we can do we have a running list of the people who we want to appoint? Great question. Um, I do have a list. I would love to get feedback on what the process for appointment is. Um, they have been informed that they're on the committee. So if there was something that yeah. needed to happen on a board at large, that is great to know. Um, I mean, I think we have to formally nominate and appoint them. So that way it's it's a standing body. And it's also one of those things where like obviously people, you know, we we can we can add people as they go along. And um yeah, you know, I, I think the only thing it, it matters for are things like quorum and any action, but otherwise it's obviously an open meeting and yeah, you know, if we want to add yep. people, people drop off. Um we can we can do that on a rolling basis. Okay, so does there need to be a formal process? Should we yeah, we, tonight yeah. or? I mean, we should, we, we, everyone that you've told is on the committee, we should, we should nominate and appoint. Um, and then, you know, if, if we need to add folks, we can, we can do that later, but okay. um, it's pretty easy. We can just put, and we'll probably just do this all as a, as one motion once we get, um, yeah, everyone's preferences set. We can, and now we can just put those names in. Um, and you can either tell me or you can just send me an email and I'll I'll read it off when we um, when we get to the okay. nomination. So. Okay, okay, great. Um, yeah, and then on that is, uh, it's myself and Lynn and Rhett and um, Scott. And uh, Lynn and myself have, uh, volunteered to be co-chairs of that committee. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, excellent. Then we'll just get the rest of the list. So the rest of the positions have all been um, have all been already appointed. We did those uh, on what was it the sixth that we met. Um, Tim, you, the, you're the one that's new to it. Do you need a refresher on, on those positions or do you feel like you've- um, Which positions? The, the one we've already appointed. We've appointed, um, you know, Scott stepped up uh, to replace yeah. Jill for the- Yeah. Uh, okay, you, you got yeah. that. Okay, cool. Um, so I don't know how best to do this, Scott. Um, I, I don't either. I just want to, um, I need to come off of something <laughs> i've already had four board meetings this week um and so um, yes. i'd like to come off policy maybe sorry jim um and that's what i want to come off of too <laughs> that's fine. so we got a clean slate um which doesn't do well i think that committee in particular needs continuity or maybe it doesn't i don't know but if we both leave and then emma's already gone that leaves. i think somebody should be on it who's been on it for a bit just to... Yeah, I, I, I may, I, I may stay. Could, could I offer a suggestion? The just for a bit that Lynn said gave me an idea that you could just do it for like two, two or three months to to do a smooth handoff, yeah. and then we could formally allow you to step down yeah, from the or, committee or like, instead of having it be like you're looking at the next year. Oh yeah, no, being and, a member of all yeah. all the committees that you're currently on, and we do we just for everyone we 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 do shift committees in midstream yeah. if if people are feeling yeah. 
overloaded or or whatever. We've done it. Um, yeah. So uh, you are not locked in stone. Has Has anyone been on policy besides the two of us on this current board? I have. Yeah, right. Has. I'm interested in the policy committee. You'd be uh, interested in going back? Yeah. I mean, I can't be on every committee. Um, no, you can't. <laughs> you can try, Red. I don't recommend I don't it, though. Want to do that. <laughs> well, and I think Tim is interested in, you're interested in finance, right? Yeah. Would you want to, would you want to step off of finance? Sure. Okay. What what is the negotiation season? Is it August September? Yeah, when the, we start... gonna, the teachers are going to want to start early. They already talked to me about that, so I would imagine that the teachers get started right really in September, maybe October. The IAs typically take a little bit longer. To um, I wouldn't expect that. Like I, I usually have to push them to get started, so I expect them around November. November ish, hopefully. And we oftentimes have Pietro help us with teacher negotiations. Yeah, teachers is actually less stressful than or less work, I'd say, than the IAs. Pietro really leads the teachers. It's a different kind of work, I guess, than the IAs. The IAs aren't overly burdensome. They're it's just a, it's a different kind of work. You just don't have. More talking and conversation with the IAs than, than PH are leading the leading the way. Yeah, you, you don't have the help of a highly skilled, highly paid professional. Right. <laughs> uh, which which can which can be useful. Um, Do we have a Word doc version of the committee assignments or just the PDF? I just have I just have a PDF which I printed out and I'm, I'm chicken I'm scratching chicken scratching it and I bet you Anna's on top of it yeah <laughs> yeah no, Anna does a does a great job of of translating our chicken scratch into uh, usable documents. Um, well, if it helps, I'm on three committees and I like the ones I'm on and I'd like to stay there. Okay. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. Unless you and she's really like, and I'm not moving somewhere. Don't else. put me on another committee. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I just heard. So Scott in. would like to drop off of policy. Is there any other committees that you're? That that's my preference. Okay. Um, and I think if I did that, I would be at a yeah. at a equilibrium. Yeah. When I and, after the first year on the career center, especially because I was the chair, but yeah. even so, there's subcommittees on that yeah. board as well mm -hmm. for finance and facilities. So I was sort of given the pass of. Not that being on negotiations is a pass, but having only one other committee. So I'm happy to take your spot on policy if that helps. Oh, oh. there you go. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so I think. Uh, I think other than finance, Tim, where, I'm not what, sure. what's grabbing your eye? I, uh, you know, I figure I'm the new guy, so I'll. I'm also happy to take the last things hanging <laughs> as a new guy, but I mean, the things that I, and policy is interesting that sort of evaluation committee sounds interesting as you were describing it. So those are things and I'd be happy to do, I guess, what's the norm here? Two or three or what? I'd be happy to do three because it seems like a couple of those are low I lift. Could, I could uh, give you my spot on the evaluation committee and then I would stay with policy, RVS, and um, what's the and then negotiations. Yeah, that's a that's a heavy that's a full load for you, Rhett. Yeah. So 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 you could take my spot on the evaluation committee, um, just to lessen things for me a tiny bit. If that works for anyone. Yeah, finance is just quarterly meetings. Yeah. So if he's on that. And the others, it's. Do you want to, do you want to put you on policy too, and I can stay there for continuity. And if it, if I can swing it time wise, I'll stay. And otherwise, if you're getting up to speed, I that's maybe something I could step off. 
Second. I said put you on policy. I can stand policy for continuity. Yeah. Um, you know, Rhett's gonna bring a little continuity too. Yeah. And then we can either keep it a four person committee or if I'm feeling overloaded, I can step off and um, you're a lawyer too. So you can, you can play that, you can play that role <laughs> if need be. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the person in charge of this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I know exactly when to use it. And are all the folks who currently are on the negotiation is the committee happy with being on the negotiations committee? And is there anyone who's just dying to be on the negotiations committee? That's when I actually would prefer not to be on just because of work mm. that I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay on. Okay. <laughs> that was part of it. <laughs> yeah. So that's so we can keep that as is. Um, is everyone who's on the finance committee with the except the you know, we switch tick out Tim out for Rhett? Um, does is anyone wanting to move on to the finance committee or wanting to move off of the finance committee? I'm happy where I am. <laughs> I love finance committee. You love finance committee. I'm on the finance committee for the um, career center too, so it's like uh, efficiencies of scale. So let's say we have policy committee all set, unless there's someone else who's interested in the policy committee. And just to recap, that's Jim, Rhett, Jill, and Tim, Tim. on policy right now. Jim is emeritus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the equity committee, um, is there anyone who wants to step on or off of the equity committee right now? It's Kristen, Mia, and Lynn. And we can, yeah, we can have four people, we can have five people on the committee. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Not, we have to swap out. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. Right, I thought that when I started, there was a discussion around the optimum is three, so that if two people are there, you still have a quorum. quorum. There's yeah. still a quorum. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so with four, if two people are there, it's not a quorum because it's not more than 50%. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Although I think that's just for, I think you can still meet and do business. You just, just you can't, can't take action. You can't take formal yeah. action. Yeah. Um, so it's not, and yeah. there's not a lot of formal action that's yeah. taking the committee. Most take the taken to the board. So it's not, it's not a trend. And I also think we try to like three to four is a sweet spot yeah. because if we tried to, I think we're all cognizant that there's only so many committees we can be on and only so many bodies. Yeah. Anyone who wants to move on or off the equity committee? It doesn't feel good to me that there are three women on the equity committee. <laughs> um, and I also was told that I need to learn how to say no. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, can't tell you who told me I need to say no, but. <laughs> Someone <laughs> you might be able to guess. I mean, it's good advice, no matter who gave it <laughs> yeah. to you. It's good so, advice. Someone near and dear to you. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I'm contemplating it. Well, you can always join later. I was just gonna say you you could assess mm. how this new balance is working yeah. for you, Scott. And if you're feeling like you've got a little more to give, mm -hmm. just yeah. well, we can appoint you to it. And the meetings are open to the public, so yes. you could visit, check sure. it out. <laughs> yeah. So right now we're set with that. Mm -hmm. Scott may, if time allows, um, want to move out of the committee at some point um, this year. Uh, facilities and energy, um, right now it's Kristen, Lynn, and Jake. Anyone who is either interested in stepping on that committee or stepping off of the committee? I think I'd be interested in joining that committee. Awesome. It's yeah. you know, when it meets. So. We have a <clears throat> at lunch times on weekdays, um, but we could move it to a time that's better for you, probably. Yeah, I feel like we've largely been re meeting on either kind of early Friday mornings uh, or or kind of lunch hour on Fridays. I love early Friday mornings. Yeah, I didn't hear who was that wanting to hop on. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, we could try to figure out, Miriam, um, kind of a time that would work for you. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. One quick question. Are these, is the practice typically remote for the committee meetings or are they typically in person? Usually remote. Okay. The finance committee is often in person because it's like 5.30 oh. immediately uh, preceding a board meeting. Got it. Yeah. But and there's, there's use, they're often, doesn't Christina yeah. usually kind of report yeah. out? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the only one that I think I've negotiated. And negotiations is generally in person. They're often before board meetings, too. Yeah. Or just at random Sometimes. times that oftentimes never end. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, You're getting jaded. <laughs> getting. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I had a nine hour We're picking on you too. nine hour negotiations <laughs> meeting once. It was Ouch. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um I brought snacks. Uh, so it seems like we're do we the current lineup of the facilities and energy committee is good with the addition of Miriam? Great. Uh the net zero ad hoc committee is on there. Is that something we need to appoint folks to, Kristen? Um, I believe we do. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I maybe need to have a conversation with you, Jim, Libby, about just like 101 appointing, um, committee member or sorry, community members to, to. Have, have we already appointed members? <laughs> we have members. Okay. It's not a formal process. However, that process has <laughs> always members. been very much but um, pause. I just like having committee parties, so I don't really <laughs> I don't acknowledge formalities. Um, so yeah, but anyhow, but that group has also not really formally assembled because at the time that we were finally getting momentum, budget meteors hit. So um, yes, but we have interested parties, and we really need like a regrouping now that um, we're starting to move forward. Yeah, so it's it sounds like it may be in flux a little. Do you want to kind of get the group that? I think reconvening the facilities and energy committee would be kind of first step, and then as a group, you know, kind of figuring it out from there. Um, you know, there's just been a lot of different um, things that have occurred since this this group started. So I think we need to start with a committee meeting, and then you know, and then go from there. Yeah. Kristen, I also think that's a that's a good conversation and question to have with um, the the people who are doing our facilities audit. Yes. There, there's there's mention of net zero in the in the audit that you'll see, so they will be excellent resources for the facilities and energy committee. Great, yeah, and I think that's kind of what we were trying to figure out is just like the timing of of that piece and when to get this ad hoc committee if there was kind of things that we would be waiting on for them so there was just a lot of you know a lot of different threads that felt like we needed to pull together so yeah wait for the audit on that because they they do talk about that okay and do we okay yeah and i'll, I'll get them in may okay yep. may yep thanks okay do we, do we have the board members appointed to that not yet uh, yeah okay. that sounds like Kristen. <laughs> uh, yeah, that did up, I think initially oh, wait, the board members are yeah. well no like with the future with the years Roxbury years. um transition future of Roxbury Village School Committee like we decided on the four board members and then like got the community and so I didn't know if we had right, we haven't done that step, that's wrong. and I should know the answer because I was on the board one and... yeah I'll claim like a little bit of amnesia <laughs> around I, I just like some revisiting is is necessary um on the composition of that so i'll check in and and circle back with folks and the um facilities and energy committee just kind of fold that in temper fold the net zero in temporarily yeah i mean that's where it lives you know you mean the, the ad hoc committee lynn yeah yeah, so the ad hoc committee kind of lives within the um, the facilities and energy committee. That was a 
kind of uh, first initiative of the uh, resolution that the board passed was to create this ad hoc committee to kind of support um, the implementation of the resolution and get feedback from a group of, you know, just informed and experienced um, stakeholders uh, in that realm. Uh, so that's that's where it currently lives. So it's really an ad hoc subcommittee mm -hmm. of the facilities and energy. Yes, yeah, that feels accurate. Got my nomenclature right here. Yeah. Yeah, and I think in terms of, of pointing, that probably could be a consent agenda item. You could just, once you get the list, you could just send it to Anna and she could put it in the packet. And... For the net zero? Yeah. Uh -huh. For both, right? Yeah, for both. Uh... The, it's, the important thing is that it's in the public record. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that it happens. Otherwise, yeah. it's, it's not a committee. <laughs> it's just a group of just people. A party. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a party. It's just a party. No just formalities. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm, I don't know, I think I'd also just like to say, just taking this all in, um, I, I don't know how, I, I feel that the RVS uh, transition committee work is going to be a, a, you know, a big, a big lift and the, com the facilities committee alongside with this ad hoc committee, I feel like that sort of puts me on three committees and I may want to consider stepping down from the equity committee as much as I really don't want to. But I think just realistically, I don't think I can hold all four of those pieces. So if there was somebody who is really hankering for a space on the equity committee, oh, double thumbs down from Mia. Okay. Uh, well, I, I support that. I support you setting boundaries and saying no when you need yeah. to, Kristen. I but know, but I see, also see Jim is looking at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I also will miss you. Yes, thank you. And it seems like maybe Scott, if this could be a segue for you. Oh boy. Oh, but you also. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> he's working on saying no as well. The camera's on about. me right now, which is good. Well, why don't you've got a lot of Why don't we? Um, why don't we move you from the equity committee and just leave it at two for now with the idea that, that Scott is, is going to, to go wrestle with. The <laughs> just put me on the equity committee. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll call it. We'll call wow. It. It's possible in June I could join another committee, um, but not right now. Can, can we ask you to join another committee so you can say no to that? So we can like <laughs> at least say you said no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else is it? Oh, finance. He's on. He's on policy finance and. No, you just took him off policy. He's not. You're not on policy, right? That's right. Not, as well. not you didn't just take him off. He's team. on finance, RVS. Oh, and that, and that. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, and and he's the, the rep to the center of Vermont. Right. And is on the finance. Yeah. Okay. No, we don't need to. Yeah. We don't need to repeat your CV to you. Sorry. Yeah. You, you get low marks on saying no. This is going to be recorded, is it? <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. It's, it might even be being watched. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, what else we got? So do you have names you want to list for the... Um, RBS Transition Committee. I'm sorry, one more time. Do you have names that you want to list for the RBS Transition Committee so we can just put those in and, and approve them as part of the slate? Yep, I would just need to scroll to another screen wow. and document. Give me a moment. Okay. And so, and just while you do that, everyone is okay with the idea of the equity committee kind of doing an exploration of communications and coming up with some next steps on that. Maybe even just an equity and communications committee at some point. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, the initial thinking is that we'd have ideas to bring before yeah. the board and then the board would figure out what to, what to do. do with them and how to use them. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Right. I'm good with that. That's been my deal for a long time. So awesome. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm ready. So you want me to read these off and then I could like copy paste these names into an email if that's easiest. Yeah, perfect. And I yeah, send them to um, Anna and me and Libby. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So our RVS, Roxbury Village School Transition Committee, uh, folks that we would like to nominate are Amber Wadley, uh, Biba Khan, Diego Soria, Hannah Bryant, Hannah Zajak. Jackson Renfrew Garrard, if I have that right. Um, Katie Swick, Katie Stevens' favorite, Peyton Donahue, Rachel Popoli, and Victor Guarango. Nice. Awesome. I hear some students in there. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's a good we list. Have, we have three students two from uh, Roxbury and one from Montpelier. Thank you. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think we have a nice mix of skills and people yeah. and perspectives and stuff. Yeah. I think that'd be good. So can I have a motion to nominate the fall? Well, before I do that, any any last minute changes, switcheroos, regrets? Changes of heart. <laughs> Try not to all look at Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so can I just clarify from finance policy and evaluation? Yes. Okay. okay. So I scratched down <laughs> the names and I'm not, I'm going to repeat it. So the, so I'm, I'm going to go from bottom to top. So on the future of Roxbury Village School, the transition committee, we have Scott Rett, um, Kristen and Lynn from the board, plus all of the people that Kristen just named that she's going to put an email to send to Anna and I. For superintendent evaluation, uh, me, Tim, Mia. The Net Zero Ad Hoc Committee will be formed or at least um, put in an email and sent to us at a later date. Uh, facilities Energy will be Kristen, Lynn, Jake, Miriam. Equity, Scott, Mia, Lynn. Policy, Jim, Rhett, Jill, Tim. Finance, Tim, Scott, Jake, negotiations, Jill, Rhett, Jim, Lynn. Does that all sound right? Do I have a nomination? Do I have a motion to appoint that slate to what I just said they're on? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, thanks. Um, and Anna, how much of that did you get and how much did you need sent to you? <laughs> I got it all updated on the Google Doc already. We're good. Dang. Oh, wow. Dang. That is awesome. I, I just wanted to highlight one thing that I think, Lynn, you, you mentioned, but I just want to make sure not only board members, but also members of the public who are watching, these committees meetings are open meetings, just like board meetings are. And these are places where members of the community can um, serve as a member of a committee without, ha without having to be a board member. So if anyone who's listening is interested and says, hey, I'd really like to be part of that equity committee, but is thinking maybe they're not allowed to because they're not a board member, that's not true. We can, we can have um, citizen members of our committees. Is I that, think for some, but not all. Right, not like in yeah. negotiations, we yeah. probably can't. We cannot, no. Um, and... For so, if anyone's interested in any of them, please email schoolboard at mpsvt.org to to know whether or not it's one that you could serve on, or if you want to get the like ongoing meeting schedule so that you can participate in it if you want. That's a quick question. Do we like probably a new guy question again? But do we have chairs of each? Like, will someone call a meeting yep. that we will? Okay, all right. And when the committees meet. They can they can nominate their own chair. Okay, I just want to make sure that yeah, I'm gonna do something. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and we can we can set those those processes in motion. Um, so then we have revote board messaging, which I have to be one hundred percent honest that I'm not totally sure what. That is. I can, I can help you out there. This is for the board to discuss, like, how do we, what, is there anything we want to do leading up to April 30th oh, the, to okay. encourage that getting vote. out the vote and okay. help inform voters about the new version of the budget? Okay. 
That revote. Okay. That revote. Yes. Not revote. We are not. I know. Like, <laughs> did we vote on our board muster? Like, uh, okay. Um, can I start off hot out of the gate on this one? <laughs> you start out yes. however you want. Um, uh, I was hoping. So, your flurry of front porch form <laughs> posts right before the original vote was great. Oh, thank you. Um, and I was really hoping that. I think probably the front porch forum activity is going to pick up again, you know, with all kinds of craziness. Is there some way that we can nip misconceptions in the bud right as they happen? Like, oh, they want to do a track and it's blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, well, here's what we're doing on the track. You know, it's $400,000 out of originally 1.9s for safety. Well, you know, is that possible? I think it definitely is. I mean, here's kind of my thought on the budget. I think we did hard work and made hard choices. And I think we've got a budget that's going to pass. My concern is that people are just going to forget to vote. Concern is what? People are going to forget to vote. Forget to vote. And, and I, th I think like we can definitely do that messaging. I think getting frequent reminders out to the public that, you know, walk walk to city hall vote it's on the third it's, it's you know it's a weird it's a weird day people have already had town meeting day they're not thinking about voting um it's it's kind of not on the calendar it's you know for state workers it's not a holiday it's it's kind of a random tuesday in it's the middle of spring the first tuesday coming back after spring break yeah. where maybe maybe folks have been traveling um John Odom um, did some stuff on Front Porch Forum about the vote, and I don't know if he would be willing to do something else, but we could also remind people that they can get absentee ballots. You can walk down And now. drop them. Yeah. You, you can vote tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. They are ready to accept your vote. Yeah. Um, so I think we should, you know, that might help a lot with yeah. getting more votes in and reminding people. And I think um, we, are you still doing stuff in the bridge? Uh, I'm planning to do another Times Artist Argus article, and I think you're planning to do something in the bridge, right? I could. I could. Yeah. I think those are a component. Yeah. I wouldn't say they're the only thing. That, yeah, yeah. Only thing we should do. Yeah. But I, I think like having just us ping folks and also using kind of having it be a constant thing in the like principles um, communications to, to caregivers that walk you know you please vote we can't tell people how to vote we can say, please vote and you can either vote on april 30th you can request an absentee ballot to be sent to your house or you can just go get know, one go get one and and take you go, know it's go vote it's it's a five second vote it's i just, mean it's, it's, it's just the one it's question. one question so uh, i I've been seeing, I think there's like flyers posted on every school front yeah. door and the the weekly messages coming out from principals. There's that a similar or the same flyer. Um, I think in my before I retired from UVM extension, um, one of the one of the tactics we were really focusing on was was not 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 reinventing the wheel, right? You take the same yeah. content and you repurpose it for you know every possible medium. And so if if you're already planning a, a Times Artist Times Argus article, you know what? Can we just take that and with some reformatting, make it a front porch forum post, make it a bridge article, make it a yep. whatever, and rather than you know seven of us all creating something from scratch. No, I think we should definitely do that. And and yeah, the a link to the Times Argus Argus article can be a front porch forum post. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I I just think like. Reminding people to to get out and vote mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. sooner rather than later. No need to wait. Yeah, no need to wait. Yeah, and especially yeah, especially with you know, spring break because yeah. you know people are going to be focused on going on spring break and then they're going to come back and then they're going to you know. Do we have to have a budget information meeting prior to the vote, just like on town meeting day? I thought I, that was in the timeline. I think we do, yeah. There is an informational meeting. It's not a it's not a board meeting. It's, it's not a board meeting, but there is an informational meeting that we yeah. have to have. And we'll have it. It has to be a certain number of days prior yeah. to the vote. Yeah, well, Christine and I are already planning on doing it the day before the vote. Yeah. 
They were pretty awesome flyers. I'm not to sign me and Alara up for more work, but I was thinking that if we could try and send those flyers home with high school students, that could be a way to get them to the parents. So we could potentially park ourselves at the doors before break and try and get them to people. Can we ask teachers to put them in folders for like, I know my kids bring stuff home from elementary school and in theory, they're supposed to bring them home from middle school. Usually in the end of the week packet or something, isn't there? It, it, yeah, it varies depending upon the, the teacher and the age, I suspect, but there is a mechanism for getting stuff home. And I think it varies. That's a question for Libby and Brad. I, I see your hand. I'll give you in a second. Yeah, we we can totally send something home. It, uh, Scott, you're right in that it varies in age as to <laughs> what actually gets home. <laughs> but ours are um, usually crumpled up underneath, like last week's lunch. Right, exactly at the bottom of the backpack that you clean yeah. out maybe once a week. Yeah. No, I found orange juice and uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. I was just, I think it's worth mentioning that um, it's likely folks in Roxbury will be quite motivated to vote. Yeah. Um, so for what it's worth, um, if Montpelier supports this, this budget, people should show up. Um, Rhett, do you know if the if Tammy, the town clerk, has, um, has ballots already? We just know that John Odom has ballots already. In I don't know if they use the same printer or anything. Kristen or Rhett, do you know? I don't know. So we don't, don't know that. if folks in Roxbury can, we should just yeah. make sure we're clear. Like we don't want Roxbury folks to go to the town hall tomorrow and be like, I'm ready to vote and have Tammy go, sorry, you're not, I'm not ready for you. So yeah, we, we don't have heard from Tammy. I'm not sure. Okay. But I don't know if they usually, if she usually tells us when the ballots are in. I don't, I don't think that's usually a conversation we have, but it's not usually one with John either. I think John right. is because it's a three vote. Right, right. I do think that John and Tammy have been in touch quite a bit. So he may be yeah. a little better than we are. Yeah, that's what John said when he came here. He said that they were in, in yeah. communication yeah. and Tammy was just like, do whatever. Yeah. They, Roxbury was sounded like a lot easier. Yes. Than, than Montpelier and could do whatever worked. It's just a matter of whether or not he literally only has the ballots now because the printer was faster than yeah. he expected them to be. So we don't know if she's using the same printer or whatever. Mm. So we don't want to be putting out false get out the vote information. Absolutely. That would be bad. Kristen. I, did, I, I recall there being a conversation um, that if you had requested an absentee ballot in the first vote that you would automatically be sent an absentee yeah. ballot in this vote is that true no John, I, they changed I that rule really exactly. that. Yeah. Did, yeah he retracted that okay so, so that you is need to request one again yes. mm -hmm. if you, you would prefer to do an absentee ballot you do need to request one again from your town clerk an absentee okay. ballot at home but you can vote early and basically get an absentee ballot like at the desk and john had just... included that in his yeah. front porch forum post yeah. and there was i can't he, i think he checked with the department of state or agents whoever runs the elections but and second secretary thank you very much yeah. okay i'm just gonna shut up <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um so i get the time to already start i totally agree with you scott let's Recycle materials, we don't need to write the same thing seven times. Uh, but I think it's really important to remind people in both communities about the date and how to vote, where to vote, and to vote, because um, it's a weird election. And am I correct in saying we could send an email to our friends and neighbors as an individual person yeah. that says, hey, the vote's coming up. You can vote tomorrow. We could do that. We don't have to. It doesn't just have to be um, front porch forum and like, the bridge and whatever. Yeah. We, we, can, we can do it on Facebook and yeah. yeah. So that would be another tactic we could use as individuals to just say, want to make sure you know you could vote today at town at town hall. Yeah. If you're a Montpelier resident, are we allowed to tell ask our friends and neighbors to support the budget? So I, I'm glad you asked as, that as question. an individual. Yes, yeah. I think I think if someone like. 
Jake Feldman, should I vote for this budget? I think you say, yeah, as Jake Feldman, yes, I'll, I, you should. You should. I don't well, think you can voted. say like the board on behalf of the board. I'm going to vote Jim, on behalf of Jake. You certainly can. We we unanimously voted to support the budget. There is in a public to meeting to voted to voted to voters. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as as for some odd reason, like as a board body, you can you can tell people you can ask people to vote. You can tell them why it's beneficial for the school, but you can't say, go vote yes. I thought the question was as an individual, even an individual board member, I can say, I supported this budget. I think if, I think if you have your board hat on, you can say you supported your budget and why, mm -hmm. you just can't say, vote yes on the budget. You say, please vote on the budget, and here's why I supported it. I know it's, it's kind of stupid, but I, I don't get it. Like, because obviously, we wouldn't forward a budget to the voters that we didn't want them to vote mm -hmm. yes on. But well, there are cases, and I've, not, yeah. I've never experienced this as a board member myself, where boards are not unanimous, this for example. Yeah. But that's not the case not it, right yeah. now. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's the reason. I, I think it's I think it's something else. That's I think there's some, some other weird, technical thing, some weird quirk behind that that rule. Um, I would be interested in knowing what the weird quirk is, but we definitely don't have to go there tonight since it doesn't. <laughs> since it seems like nobody in this room knows what the weird quirk is, I don't no. think we have to talk about the weird quirk. I'm sure I'm sure Pietro does, and I'm sure for so well, send him an email. Yeah. Meeting, right. So. Um, so those are ideas that we have for the sort of get out the vote. I think we could come back to Jake's hot take about engaging on Front Porch Forum about around clar making clarifications, right? Yeah, well, if, if these articles were out there, um, then as the misconceptions pop up, we could say, you know, actually, here's this truth. And for more information, just check out this article or our budget page. The budget FAQ page is the place I was to. So the budget FAQ or Times Argus article. Yeah. That would be ideal. Yeah. I, um, one question I have about that is whether or not that's something we would sort of empower any board member to do if they saw it on Front Porch Forum or if it's something we want to task a, a singular individual or 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 a couple of individuals to do. Um, um, maybe that the equity and communications committee could talk about that in the near term. Um, it seems like it might get messy if a lot of board members were yes. trying to take responsibility. Yeah. Um, I personally, I don't think I would be good at it, but you know, I'd be comfortable I mean, with you doing it. Why don't we? Why don't we do it this way? Why don't if you if you see something on Front Porch Forum that you think should be responded to, send an email to Libby and me, and then I can share it with Mia. That if, if you include me on the first one, then I think we get three. Mm -hmm. um, and we can like. And with even like a proposed response. And then we can vet it. And that way it won't get, we won't be speaking with a bunch of different voices. There'll be a coordinated point, but we'll all kind of be watching. You know, you can propose text and then, you know, we can kind of like respond that way. And I, I'm not sure we, I'm not sure we want to respond to it. Everything on Front Porch Forum, but I think if there if if there are misconceptions that seem to be building, um, I think it's I think it's I think it's helpful to to correct them. Yeah, I think engaging in a dialogue through Front Porch Forum doesn't help. Yeah. But yeah, if there is, yeah. Some wild rumor out there that everyone thinks we're you know spending two million dollars on a swimming. on a swimming pool. Uh, we we probably want to correct that. 
Now there will be. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. We might end up spending $2 million on a swimming pool, but it would be because of a flood. Oh, yeah, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and we could just acquire a swimming pool. Yeah, oh. Spend money on it. <laughs> okay. I th yeah. What you just proposed sounds good to me. The thing I was trying to weigh, like the, the what I was weighing in my mind was it sometimes is a lot of work to keep up with what's go with the, yeah. the things that get posted on Front Porch Forum. So it would be a lot, I think, to ask of one person to, to be tracking it all but if we have collective, anybody, eyes. collective eyes and then a central like a funnel that the communication goes through i think that yeah. works certainly for the next month yeah yeah i was thinking like themes that are emerging not necessarily individual yeah messages. sure yeah. yep oh that virgin's note of caution and restraint <laughs> and not you know not over overdoing that and it's sort of because I, I think it can get a little yeah. back and forth to you in it can get ticky tacky way sometimes so stick to the facts yeah i do think it's important to note um the very real heartache of having to close roxbury village school when we do talk about these yes. things that yes. we have made really really challenging and you know difficult decisions to arrive at this budget it's not a responsibility we take lightly and just kind of remind folks who might start to sort of pick away it's like this is this is after a lot of work a lot of a lot really of hard work and some pain um and just sort of honor that for, is there, is there... no just that it, i don't want it to sort of be like okay that's that happened and and yeah. i need Montpelier voters to understand how ma how massive that was kristen thanks for saying that jill i think um I feel compelled to share that this is a really difficult vote out in Roxbury. Um, the premise of this vote is moving our youngest students to UES, which was not the will of our community. Um, and that's really being felt right now. Um, I do expect there to be a number of voters, it's impossible to tell how many in Roxbury that will vote no on this budget due to that factor. Um, I know that the budget originally did pass, you know, the first budget did pass in Roxbury and, you know, I think in part, it's an assumption, but that budget passed because the budget did include, um, continued operation of RDS. Um, so, you know, Rhett and I are definitely in a, in a different place, um, in a, in a, in a trickier place in terms of, um, motivating the vote out here because, um, this budget is, is a hard one for a lot of folks to swallow. Um, so I think, you know, uh, Rhett and I have, I know we put it in the Roxbury Newsy that, you know, this would be, these are just the logistics of the vote and how to vote and, and what have you, but um, the nature of this vote is a really, really hard one out in Roxbury. Um, and I know that we have things to add to that conversation in terms of the whys of, you know, why, you know, at least I voted for this was the addition of the transportation funding, the consideration of after school, um, and and things like that, but this is this is definitely a tough vote out in out in Roxbury. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think I think we should encourage people to vote regardless of Absolutely. how we feel they're going to vote. Absolutely. So. so thank you already yeah, thank for you. doing the the work of making sure people know how to do it and when to do it. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on that? And I'll, I'll get to that TA article um, for the next couple of days. Well, thanks everyone. And, and definitely, I mean, to Jake's point, you can you can talk to friends and neighbors as an individual kind of as, as you want. And you know, um, definitely encouraging people to get out as to vote is, is important because it is, it's a, yeah. It's a weird election. There's nothing else on the ballot. It's the timing's a little strange. So um, turnout is probably going to be not as high as uh, we see in other elections. Um, so our final order of business, and we may have have an under four hour meeting here. Uh, <laughs> 
is uh, policy monitoring. Uh, we have um, three policy monitoring reports, uh, FM100, which is budget execution, um, D7, special education, and D22, uh, selection of library materials. Do I have a motion to approve those three um, monitoring reports? So yep. moved. So moved. Oh, he can do it. Jake can do it. Yeah. Anna. Jake, Jake was nodding his head, which I, I don't think counts. But... <laughs> she can't see that. <laughs> yeah. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, any discussion about the monitor reports? As a general matter, is it the case that when we're getting policy reports, they come with the approval of the policy committee? Yeah. Uh, that... The policy monitoring is it's solely Libby. So these are these are policies that you know were approved by the policy committee and then approved by the board and enacted. And she just periodically uh, basically reports compliance of okay. those. Okay, so what we're approving here is nothing about the policy. It's about those like addendums. To the yeah, exactly. Policy that it's, say this is how we're. Yeah. It's almost like we're accepting this monitoring report. Yeah. Okay. It's just, it's just, yeah, we want to make sure that we're um, in okay. compliance with all the policies and, and we just put, put them on a, a rolling basis. Another new guy, nuance that I didn't. No, it's it's a it's a good question because it, it it might not be yeah. obvious. Yeah, no, no. thanks no, for asking. And, yeah, thanks for asking. And, and like, feel free to ask those whenever because um, I know when I was new, I oftentimes sat there and be like, oh, "What am I doing?" Uh, <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, and then motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.